And welcome back, rugby fans of Rugby 411. As always, I'm your host. My name is Joshua Shibata, and it is week 13 uh, power rankings for the 2024 MLR season. 13 weeks have gone by. Uh, we are near the end of the season. We are getting close to that playoff race, and it has been it has been an amazing season so far. Super exciting. A lot of teams are, I mean, granted there are a lot of positions that are available. Uh, 12 teams playing, 8 teams can go into the playoffs. So there's quite a few spots available. But man, everybody is fighting their hardest to get those spots. Uh, it is almost every team's possibility to still make the playoffs even at this point. Uh, no one has quite locked things away just yet. But uh, there are a couple of teams that are pretty damn close. Uh, it is getting to the nitty-gritty, and it is super exciting. Uh, not a lot of action this weekend. There's only four games, so therefore, um, kind of changed it up a little bit. I put the teams that were on by, so you have your top team so far, not only in the MLR standings, but in my power rankings, Houston Sabercats, Dallas Jackals, Utah Warriors, and then Anthem Rugby um, Carolina that are on the bottom uh, and then these are the four teams that that were fortunately having a bye and enjoying the Memorial Holiday. Everybody else was in action. And again, um, quite a bit of exciting games. Uh, one really huge upset. We'll go into that in detail. Um, I will be bringing back the yellow card counter again this week because it was a hit from last week. Also, too, because it is kind of apropos. Uh, and you'll see when we start counting how many cards... Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the most penalized and carded season in the entire history of the seven years of Major League Rugby. I don't know what to say about that, but it is kind of interesting that it is the way that it is now. Again, if you've never seen my Power Rankings videos before, purely based on what you do on the pitch, who you play against, who you lose, where you play, all those factors play in is not just a simple win-loss record. I mean, granted, again, as you see, the best team by far on standings wise with only one loss is the Houston Apricots. They are my top team, but uh, it, it does work out a little bit that way, but it isn't purely based on standings. It really is about what you do on the pitch, why I watch all the games, uh, why I spent a lot of time really sitting down with this. This was a little bit easier of a week comparatively to last week. If you remember uh, that kind of debacle and debate about where teams should move, a little bit easier when you have the buy teams uh, a little bit further down and up so everyone else can kind of move in the middle. Uh, again, my policy with teams that are on buy, I don't feel they should move up or down in the power rankings. Uh, I believe they should kind of stay put. So again, when you have them a little bit spread out like this, a lot easier to move people around depending on where they should be. But enough chit chat, let's get in action. And sadly, the first game that we have to start with is uh, the rematch for the Cali Cup. San Diego Legion taking on Rugby Football Club LA at Dignity Hill Sports Park. Oh man, it was a uh, it, it was a heartbreaker of a game, especially if you are an LA fan like myself. Um, started off really great. LA scored first. Um, beautiful try by Jack Shaw. And then... Uh, as we were approaching the second half, San Diego got back-to-back -back yellow cards. Could have been a third yellow card. There was a late hit that completely crushed one of the LA players into the sideboards. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, depending on whose team, whose side you're rooting for, San Diego did not get the yellow card. San Diego, though, down two men, were able to score a try, uh, but Semi Kunatani was able to get, who's been phenomenal, was able to get two tries, two tries in the first half to put LA at halftime up 19 to 7. And then it was all San Diego after that. 20 unanswered points by San Diego. Uh, they totally dominated LA. I don't know what exactly happened with LA. They kind of just ran out of gas. Defense kind of fell apart as well. Former LA Guillotini Christian Prince Poi Devin was able to sneak in a try in the second half. Um, Connor Tupoy, the uh, captain of San Diego, was able to put the winning try, um, pretty much keeping the game away from LA. Makito, another former Guillotini, who was able to be who able to start this time for San Diego. 
uncharacteristically not uh, very accurate off the tee. Now, there was reports that it looked like he might have hurt himself. I watched the replay a little bit, and it did look like he kind of hobbled off the field during the second half before he was replaced. And it did look like he might have pulled something, so that might have attributed to why he was, I think he was only like two for four off the tee, or one for four. Um, but either way, it did not matter, because in the end, San Diego was able to keep the Cali Cup, and again, 20 unanswered points in the second half. Uh, that's what pushed LA, unfortunately, down a spot to the number 10 spot. Um, yeah, just a disappointing, disappointing loss if you are an LA fan. Moving on, next game, Old Glory DC taking on the Seattle Seawolves. Seattle reeling from their loss uh, last week against Dallas, trying to get the get-back game, uh, taking on a very, uh, you know, very mid middle of, of the crop Old Glory DC. It was a very sloppy game. The weather was really, really horrible as well. It was raining like crazy. Also, too, Seattle, unfortunately, uh, I mean, everyone is dealing with injuries. Like I said, Rugby is a game of attrition. It really is about not necessarily the best team, but the team that has the most players left standing at the end of the season in Seattle. Unfortunately, burdened with already, uh, it was announced by a uh, head coach of um, of Seattle, that uh, Clarkey, uh, that Seattle's already lost. Uh, count them: Rickard Hatting, Charles Elton, Mason Peterson, Peter Malcolm, Carl Pryor. Five players suffering season-ending injuries at this point in the season. And again, not necessarily just, you know, people off the bench, but people that are integral to the team, uh, record Hatting especially. Um, and then unfortunately, in this game, two Seattle players had to be carted off of the field. Uh, Oliver Khalifi and then Tavita Kurajarani. Um yeah, Seattle is definitely a team that is limping along as we go into the later half of the season, into the playoffs, which is funny because last season they were struggling at the beginning and then limp near the end. This time it's reversed. They were really hot at the beginning, now kind of limping here at this point. Uh, in going back to the game, Old Glory gets uh, a yellow card, and then Seattle, moments later, gets a yellow card. So... <laughs> Both teams getting yellow cards. Um, Seattle was able to capitalize off of Old Glory's yellow card by uh, scoring a try by Cameron. Or uh, when S Seattle got their yellow card, DC was only able to get a penalty kick off of that, um, allowing Seattle to be up 11-9 at the half. In the second half, Old Glory scored immediately, but then Seattle comes back with a try of their own followed by a penalty kick by Mac Mason, who's been phenomenal for the team. Top tr top point scorer so far this season. Puts Seattle 21-16. Old Glory then gets a penalty kick of their own to get within two. Seattle scores another try. And then, unfortunately, Old Glory gets another yellow card, which then turns into a red card um, that was awarded to Tavita and Nagali. Uh, minutes into the late letter, Willie Talitayana, who... I haven't really been saying his name for a while, but he's been a phenomenal player for Old Glory. Scores a try to get the team within two. Jason Robertson with the potential time penalty kick conversion. Un uh, conversion kick, unfortunately, misses. So Seattle holds on to win it 26-24. to As I mentioned before, Mac Mason and Jason Robertson were phenomenal in this game. Uh, both of them uh, in the double digits points-wise. Mac Mason, 11 points, 4 for 5. Uh, uh, four for six off the tee. Jason Robertson, 13 points, five for seven, uh, four yellow cards, and a red card in that game. Um, unfortunately, with Old Glory losing, uh, they were number seven uh, going into this, and they slide down to number nine. Seattle, who, like as I mentioned before, lost to the Dallas Jackals, has moved up just a tad to number eight. Um, a team that, again, has been reeling with injuries, was pretty hot uh, just a couple weeks ago, is now limping their way to possibly still contain into that playoff uh, race. Next game, a, uh, a, a actually a pretty high-caliber game, Chicago, who's been on um, a little bit of a losing streak, but they've been looking pretty phenomenal as we go into the second half against the hottest team right now outside of Houston, the NOLA Gold. Um, again, a very sloppy game, uh, wet game on this one as well. 
First 20 minutes, the first try was scored by Patty Ryan um, off of a line out of Mall for Chicago. Nolo scores right back with Tavila Filimone, who scored his eighth try of the season, second uh, highest so far this season. Half ends 5-5. Five to five. Second half, Nolo scores uh, a penalty kick, but Chicago strikes back with a try by uh, Eagles' Bryce Campbell. Following another penalty kick, Nolo scores a try of their own by Ed Fido, who also has been phenomenal for New Orleans. Um, that happened, of course, after a yellow card to a team captain for Chicago, Billy Meeks, for a late charge. After a second try by Ed Fido, who's, again, like I said, has been phenomenal, puts up New Orleans by 12. Nola, though, does get a yellow card of their own. But fortunately, they were able to hold on for what would make, be, almost be an upset, considering Chicago looked pretty hot going into this game. But Nola wins 25-13, to Chicago's home uh, field record woefully just troublesome. They've only won three times at home, and that's twice so far this season. Once last season, um, that's uh, it's it's a very bad home record for a phenomenal team like the Chicago Hounds. Uh, because of that loss, Chicago slides down a spot to number seven, while Old Glory DC. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, Nola uh, continues to stay up at the number two spot. And they are looking really, really surprisingly good. Um, probably the only team that I, I really missed on with this one. Chicago's looking a lot better, but Nola, I definitely did not see them uh, climb up as high as they did. Houston, a little bit surprising too, but I thought Houston was going to turn around this season. Nola is the surprising one so far. Moving on, the last game of the, the week, and this was the big one. New England, your reigning defending MLR champions, taking on one of the new kids on the block, the Miami Sharks. What a phenomenal game for Miami. Uh, new England scores right off the bat with a, a great mall of score. Miami scores a penalty kick and a try to take the lead, 7-8. Patras was, was, again, uncharacteristically off, similar to a couple of other players uh, like Matt Gatto this weekend. Missed two penalty kicks in the first half, which would have easily given New England the lead. Instead, uh, going into the second half, Miami is up 8-7. to seven. In the second half, Patras does finally make a penalty kick. Um, Miami gets a yellow card later. New England gets a yellow card. Uh, and then as the game approaches the last 10 minutes, Miami gets another yellow card. But with three minutes left, New England uh, gets a penalty kick from Patros to be up 13-8. to eight. In extra time, Miami down by, uh, five, by, four, I'm sorry, by six points. Miami scores the winning try and gets the conversion to win 15-13. to 13, uh, Phenomenal, phenomenal game by Miami. They upset the reigning, defending MLR champions. Uh, nobody called this one. It is a phenomenal win for the Miami Sharks. Miami, because it was close, I had Miami uh, number 8 going into this week. And they move up to number 6. New England, of course, was all the way up at number 3. Drops down to number 5. It was a very close game. Miami literally pulled this one out of nothing. So I did have Miami go above New England. I had them right close. But man, Miami, for a first-year team, four wins. Uh, for a first-year team outside of the LA Giltinis, it is the highest number of wins by a new franchise. And it's a, a pretty phenomenal, phenomenal performance by the Miami Sharks. New England just went ahead. And then uh, number four again was the Jackals who are about by. Number three is the San Diego Legion moving up after defeating the Rugby Football Club LA. And then Nola and Houston round out your top two as they were on by. So that is the rankings. Again, not a lot of uh, games because of the four teams being on by, but a lot of movement. Again, as I mentioned before, Nola is the surprising one. They're looking pretty hot. They do have a really really tasty matchup coming up this weekend um, as my two top teams will face off against each other. So that's going to be really fun and interesting to see. Um, again, it's, it's pretty interesting to see Miami surging up. 
We'll see what happens to Seattle as they're injury-ridden. New England, uh, you know, they're looking a little shaky right now uh, so far. Um, you know, and then, of course, we have the teams that are really struggling. Uh, again, eight teams make the playoffs, so you're starting to look at the playoff picture. Miami might be the team to make the playoffs in their very first year. But, uh, and Dallas is looking very, very impressive with a turnaround for them. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's an interesting, like I said, it is an exciting season so far, and we are getting very, very close to the end of it. Five games left, and uh, a lot, five weeks left, and a lot, a lot of rugby left to play. Let's now get into our Super Brew Pick'ems, and this week's results, bam! So, congratulations to Red with the golden cap out of 12 possible points, 5.25. It was, again, another brutal week. I think... Honestly, we had a, a series of weeks where everybody was getting every pick right, and now it's literally, like, again, who would have predicted Miami to beat New England? I don't think anybody did. So getting a perfect score nowadays with Major League Rugby is almost impossible to do. But Red, congratulations to you. You are the top uh, point scorer. You get the golden cap. Uh, following right behind, 4.5 points by DKD Up. Haven't said his name in a bit. And then tied for third, uh, Harry, Lady Juliet, and BT Woodrow with four points each. Unfortunately, Julie EGW gets the wooden spoon for the week. Let's see our leaderboard currently. And number one is still JZS with 69.83 points. Number two, moving up a spot, BT Woodrow, 69.08. Just an eighth of a point behind our first place leader, JZ, JZS. So again, it is a very, very competitive race. Dropping down the spots in number three, James A6117 with 66.66 points. Uh, going up five points. Congratulations to Harry. Big jumper this week. Tied for fourth, 64.58 with Sari Sarai Sarai, our former number one, uh, at 64.58. So, again, congratulations, Harry, for a great week that you did. That allowed you to jump up a phenomenal five spots to get into the top five. Our bottom five... Pretty much the same, uh, number 27, Sunshine 1 with 52, 28 is Hugo, 47.5, 29, Leon with 43.25, 30 is Wild Thing with 37.25, and 31, Sunshine 2 with 29 points. So again, uh, thank you everybody that's been in my uh, Pick'em pool, uh, pool, Super Brew Pick'em Pool. It's uh, Again, it's been an exciting race for that one. Uh, it's still anybody's game. Like I said, we got five weeks left. Anybody could still claim that MLR t-shirt of the team of their choice, courtesy of yours truly. Uh, I am completely out of it. But everybody that's in at least the top 10, I still feel, has a great shot of winning the title at the end of the season. Don't forget, we do have five games that's coming up. Um, we'll go over those in my next video. But yeah, that is the, uh, the pick -em. Oh, and our yellow card counter. Let's bring up the total. Bam! 11 yellow cards and one red card last week if you remember it was 10 yellow cards one red card so it went up a yellow card but that was with five games played last week this was with four only four games and they were able to manage one more yellow card this week again i don't know what that says about the league i don't know what that says about what's going on i don't know if it's because the officials are being uh kind of coaxed into being a little harder on the rulings or if it's just the sloppy play of the league itself but kind of remarkable how high like i said this is the most penalized most carded uh, season in the seven year history of major league rugby so it will be interesting to see what that means in the long run but uh yeah it's a uh, fun with this yellow uh, this yellow card counter and red card counter technically too uh, to tally up all the cards. So that's my video. Thank you very much as always for checking it out. I do appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below what you think about with the yellow card counter, which was very, very popular, as well as with the power ranking results. If you're happy with the way it turned out, if you like where your teams are, let me know what your picks are, who you feel is number one and number two. I, I do feel these are right now the two strongest teams, surprisingly NOLA, but uh, Houston definitely for sure. So... But anyways, thank you very much for checking out my video, and as always, I'll see you on the pitch.